Happy Friday morning, everybody. I'm here at the Retail Corner with L. Dodd. He is the co-founder of Glasses USA. We're going to be talking a little bit about a, uh, some entrepreneurship, a, uh, some some fixing some problems with a uh, with 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 the glasses industry and the, how a, uh, how Glasses USA kind of does that. L. Dodd, thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you for inviting me. It's great to be here. Excellent, excellent. So, hey, uh, I've I've perused your LinkedIn a little bit, kind of kind of looked around, and and Glasses USA is doing some cool stuff. But before we get into that, I, I kind of want to walk through your CV a little bit because you've got an interesting journey. Is there a can, can you kind of walk us through your journey a little bit as to like how you got to be co-founder? How did they get to this business at all? Uh, <laughs> so mainly like yeah, like 15 years ago, me and my co-founders, uh, we're coming from the online marketing world and we were looking for the right market to disrupt. Uh, we're not opticians, we're not coming from this industry, uh, but we found this industry as very interesting for several reasons. First of all, the size of it. It's a uh, it's $150 billion worldwide. It's, it's, but, a lot, but, it's a lot bigger than people think it is, yeah. Yeah, in, in the U.S. alone, it's about $40 billion. But most important, it's like 150 billion Americans wear glasses and the rest are wearing sunglasses. So 64% <laughs> of the adult population wear vision correction. Uh, so for us, as the marketing people, uh, every kind of traffic can be converted into sales. So this is one aspect of it. The second aspect, of course, it's a small item, so it's really it's a good fit for e-commerce in terms of uh, shipping and cost effective. Um, and uh, many, you know, glasses are used to be and they're still hard, uh, very expensive product because of the long chain, because it's involved the retail and the doctor, and uh, it's a very long cycle. So we saw yeah. the opportunity to cut all the middlemen to pass the saving to the end user. Uh, creating value. That's the basic of e-commerce. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, you were, you, you talked about how, how, especially glasses and, and it, that, that particular industry, it kind of has a, it has a long tail. It has a long, long process. You know, you've got to mm -hmm. figure out the new glasses, you got the doctor, you got the prescription, you got to pick out the frames, you got to get the lenses grind, ground down and everything else in the world. And so like you're, you're talking about particularly e-commerce is even more difficult than that because it's used to be a, a, an in-person kind of a kind of feeling and so uh you're you're doing you're doing some stuff like online with the, like the the perfect i'm sorry perfect match and stuff how is that changing the whole process right well. So, you know, we're living in a really exciting times where all technology is being rapidly replaced by AI. So a few years ago, I thought that our virtual mirror where we put the glasses on the face is the, is the best technology in the world. But in the last year, we developed this uh, perfect match AI and it's an amazing tool. I encourage everyone to try it. So basically, uh, we, you know, we leverage uh, millions of historical customer data points and uh, analyzing their browsing behavior to create an AI. And that's together with the various, uh, various you know, um, facial parameters like skin tone, right. uh, nose bridge, uh, eyebrows, uh, along with your simple question that we ask you, bring the, this machine, this tool, this uh, perfect match AI to recommend you on the frame that fit perfectly on the face. It's really incredible. Uh, we see the result. It's boosted the conversion. It's, uh, you know, boosted the customer confidence. It reduced the returns. Uh, suddenly, it's perfect to your face and everyone are happy. That's cool. That's good. So, so I kind of want to talk about, uh, now that we kind of understand, uh, like, who you are and, and the company and everything else like that, I want to, I want to talk about kind of the early days of entrepreneurship and, and setting out this company. Because, like I said, it's billions upon billions of dollars. And there's there's some pretty established players in in the eyewear industry, and so coming in disrupting that industry, what were some of the like hurdles the first couple of years within that? Great question. So uh, you know every stage of the company come with its own challenges, but the biggest hurdle we had we had in the early days was reaching the customer and building the awareness. Uh, at that time, and I'm talking about a decade ago, buying glasses online wasn't the first choice for most people. 
So mm. we've been buying this, you know, we've been buying glasses the same way for the last uh, century. So, but there were two major shifts that changed the industry. So first of all, you know, it's a generational shift. The Gen Z and the millennials who are very comfortable shopping online were reaching the age where they need glasses for themselves. Uh, and that I wouldn't know anything about that. Online. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't know anything about that. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. And additionally, you know, glasses became like you know they used to be like a um, medical necessity, and now they are more fashion accessories. So we offer much sure. wider selection than their regular brick and mortar store that offer between six to seven hundred frames that they typically uh, found in the store. Uh, we offer to the end user about 12,000 different frames from, from several brands, from all the well-known brands and of course our own uh, private collection. Uh, so the ability to find the match, the perfect match for your face, the ability to narrow it down to the brand you like, to the price point you like, to the quality you like, uh, that's an amazing tool that you you know can find only yeah. in the online. So. so the biggest hurdle was the, you know, the, the the lack of awareness, and we're still okay. not in the tipping point. You know, when you when you analyze different verticals, you see that currently about ten percent of the optical market is done online, and of course in other categories it reached fifty, sixty, seventy percent. So the tipping point is yet to come, and once the technology, um, you know, will will bridge the gaps. For example, will create like comprehensive high exam using your smartphone, uh, and you will not have the need to go to the eye doctor. So of course we'll see a huge boost in the online. Of, of yeah. So, so other than being on the world-renowned retail corner podcast, what's making the biggest difference in a uh, in you guys' like market saturation in, in your in your awareness? Other than this, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, first of all, it was a very hard job. We we're doing fifteen years of uh, online marketing. In the beginning, it was like. Um, you know, simple uh, buying, uh, acquire customer after customer. But uh, I think that, you know, we used a lot of word of mouth. Uh, we supplied our customer a great product with great service and everyone brought another one. And everyone has a friend or a spouse or a child that needs glasses or needs some kind of vision correction. Uh, and that was the impact. We now have more than 5 million active customers in the U.S. We sold nice. millions of pairs of glasses. So I think that drives the awareness. And other companies that penetrated the market and everyone, you know, educated a piece of the market. Now when you get into the online, so I believe that Glasses USA today is the largest online department store for prescription glasses. So uh, Are we you enjoy the, the growth of the market. Are you seeing the fastest growth within the U.S. market, or are you seeing it somewhere else in the world? No, 99% are coming from the U.S. We're not oh. doing any marketing uh, efforts outside the United States. Of course, we ship worldwide, but mainly to Canada and the U.K. Oh, okay. That's, hey, Got to go where the customers are, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. And so yeah, uh, I'm, I'm kind of a logistics guy, and so I was reading through stuff, and I, I realized that you guys have an automated fulfillment center like like fully automated which is yeah. i mean probably a thing of beauty can you can you kind of tell me like like how did that how did that impact your operations cuz cuz i mean glasses are very i mean they're fragile by nature and so having that automation must help is there how does that help in your business oh Glasses, first of all, what we sell is, you know, it's a, it's a customized product. Every item is different yeah. and every item is customized based on the prescription of the, of the consumer. Uh, and it involves, uh, you know, picking of several items. You have to pick the right lens, the left lens, the frame itself. In most cases, it's multi-items. Uh, so, for example, we're doing about 4,000 jobs in every shift, about 12,000 jobs a day. So oh, wow. for every 4,000, you have to pick like 12,000 um, <laughs> products. So without automation, it's almost impossible to do it in one place with 100 employees. Uh, so we invested a lot in automation. So of course, the robots that bring the goods to person, then the CNC machine that cuts the, the lenses. Of course, the assembly is done manually. Uh, and then of course, the packing, the shipping, the QA, um, the labeling, everything is done uh, Fully by robots, and it's an amazing place. It's based in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, 
beautiful home. We're very proud ah, of it. I love I love Atlanta. It's it's a beautiful <laughs> beautiful city. So yeah. So, but has that? Uh, were you guys using a I guess traditional uh, fulfillment center and everything else, and you saw the need that that was there, like because that's got to be a significant investment for the company. Uh, is it how did, how did that just turn efficiency on its head? Is it are you have did you see just the number of orders bloom or? Yeah, of course. We built it in the last couple of years. Uh, after you know, we we had several locations, and then we started to outsource some of the the production. Uh, and during COVID, uh, we decided to build this operation in Atlanta, right near the airport, in order to to be you know to sell faster. Um, the AI or the technology was involved in every aspect of the company, including the inventory management, our own ERP, our own CRM, everything that our own proprietary, and we developed everything. In the logistic, we also said, okay, we are a technology company, but we will take this technology not only to create a great uh, customer behavior or customer experience in the site itself, but also the the back office, the logistic behind it. So that's what we did, and we heavily invested in that. Now I'm a I'm a logistics guy kind of thing, and so with such a specialized product, how are you guys handling like reverse logistics and returns and and customer satisfaction and things like that? Um, you know, first of all, we are trying to to come with an experience or with a service that, of course, there is no question asked. And if you want to return a product, you can return it. We are using happy returns. Um, to enable okay. the customer to, to, to send us back the product. Uh, most of the product, because our custom made, we donate the frames to, to other, um, to the ones it needs. Uh, in some cases, okay. we know to renew the frame and to resell it. Um, so the logistic process, of course, is complicated, but, uh, you know, it, I would imagine so, yeah. it's very, yeah, it's very important to the end user, and we understand totally understand that the ones that return the glasses because you know we came home and there's I was told them that it's not good to their taste <laughs> or they didn't like the color eventually. So yeah. those are the most happy customers. Those are the ones that will come again and again. Uh, you should supply with no hassle uh, experience. That's for sure. That makes sense. That makes sense. So, so I mean, I think I'm talking to the right guy with my next question. In the fact that, I mean, half of your uh, over half of your distribution center is AI and and uh, automated robots and everything else like that. What is next for this industry? What's next for like the like, especially like uh, maybe eyeglasses and personalization and things like that. So uh, it's a great question because, uh, like I said before, first of all, of course, the, the eye exam itself, which is a very important part. So we see many companies that started to develop a comprehensive eye exam. Some of them are already are in the stage of regulation with the FDA. So I guess in the next couple of quarters, we'll see a comprehensive eye exam done by your smartphone. But if we talk about the consumer, <laughs> Hold on, that's pretty cool. Like that's, I'm okay with that. You know, I, I don't. I, I, I'm trying to imagine how that would work. Like, you know, hold hold your phone out and read the read the big E and I, then down. Uh, actually, I tried several of them. It, it's accurate. It's working quite well. I know that we will be the first one to adopt it and to offer it to our to our users. You know, we already have a technology that you can use your smartphone in order to duplicate the power of your lenses. So if you know that. The glasses are fine. You don't have any change in your prescription, but you don't know your prescription. You can use your smartphone to read the power of the lenses and to oh, use okay. the, well, yeah. the data, which is a very cool uh, technology. But I guess that the smart glasses will take a big part of our life. Uh, we see the trend coming. Uh, I'm not sure it will be like what you see today, that there is some kind of uh, information that broadcasts into your lenses. I believe, personally, in my opinion, that it will be, you know, more communicate through voice. So you will have a camera on your glasses. If you look around, yeah. you can bring the AI to your eye, to your ears. You'll be able to communicate with it. So we see the smart glasses going there. Uh, in terms of customization, uh, here I think, uh, that's as you say, we're going to launch soon a product. We call it Unica. Uh, we are testing it right now. Uh, 
Uh, and Unica, it's an amazing product well, um, which prints, we print directly on the lenses itself. Uh, we print the frame, so there is not actually a real frame. So we cut the lenses. It's complicated to explain it, uh, through a podcast, but I will try to do it. So what we are doing... <laughs> Use small words for it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we print, we print uh, the pattern or the color on the lens itself, and we cut the lens based on the shape you chose so you actually the full it's the first time you can you can fully customize a pair of glasses you pick the right shape you pick the right color and pattern and then we print it for you uh it's an amazing product it's thin it's light it's eco-friendly it's flexible uh it helps the environment it reduces waste so we really believe in this product yeah. we're gonna soon launch it in our site it will take us a couple of months but it's amazing so it sounds like you guys are like really emphasizing sustainability. I mean, that's something that's like you said, Gen X is coming in with the glasses and everything. And, uh, and that's something that we care about, you know, that's, we, we care about making a difference in that way. Is there yeah. like how, other than the, the, the printing, the frames, is there, what, what are their like sustainability efforts are you seeing through the automation or through the, uh, through, through this type of process? So first of all, with the frames itself, we have made uh, some eyewear made from eco-friendly materials like recycled bottles or bio ingredients such as coffee leaves and even cannabis. We are making glasses that are made out of cannabis leaves and it's a very cool product. Uh, and of course, you know, we are... We're trying to reduce our environment footprint by uh, including uh, offering customers ground shipping option instead of overnight services. So it's true that you get it the day after or two days later, later but you you help uh, the environment, and it's very important. You're you're hitting all the right hit, you're hitting all the right marks for especially for entrepreneurship, and and so like you started this company and you co-founded it and you just you you went through the hurdles and so what advice would you give to like an aspiring entrepreneur, you know, like somebody who has an idea that sees a problem, has a solution. Where do you go from there? Oh. Especially, especially oh, in like the niche market. Okay. Well, we, are, we agree that it's not a niche market. It's quite big, but my best advice is first of all, to focus on understanding your target audience and delivering a really unique value proposition. Uh, in the e-commerce space, technology is your best friend. You should heavily invest and, uh, you know, often invest in technology. Uh, you need a robot system that, you know, in place that will, will do everything. It's from the, the platform itself and the way the site looks like. But if you control also your ERP, your CRM, your back logistics, your uh, inventory management, uh, you will be efficient, you'll be you'll be able to keep the right ratio between the uh, acquisition cost, the customer acquisition cost, and the lifetime value. Uh, and I think this is important. And I think that the most important is the data. Uh, if you understand it, understanding the customer behavior and needs is critical to offering uh, you know, a personal experience. And by that, you know, it's coming back to the previous point. It's to keep the right ratio between the acquisition cost and the lifetime value. Uh, you should find the right product, you know, that enable you to maintain right a very nice gross margin. Like um, you know, every product you you know trying to cut the middleman and uh, pass the saving to the end user. Usually, you enjoy a very high gross margin. But if you don't understand the data and you don't understand how to optimize every uh, every part of your business it will be very uh, difficult to succeed. I've been involved in several projects where the, the first step was obviously collecting data and everything like that. And, and so was there any assumption that you came in, it came in in the very beginning of, of all this that was challenged by the data where you had to adapt? Was there an assumption that that had to, what, that was changed by facts, by, by data? Is something that surprised you? Every day it happens again and again. It's from <laughs> the beginning, you know. When I first picked the collection, I used to stand in front of a mirror and ask myself if it's a nice frame or it's not a nice frame. It took me a while to understand based on the data that my opinion is not relevant at all. <laughs> and, uh, 
not relevant at all and usually it's the opposite uh so of course it started this is the basic but eventually um i'll give you an example okay management inventory management inventory it's something that you can do uh based on i don't know see what are the trends and you can use your data and to really understand what the what what do you know based on the historical data your bi to create it to an ai to understand what was the demand in previous quarters and then what would be the demand and what kind of traffic you want to bring in the future uh and to optimize uh the inventory level so for example you know that the demand for black frames is much higher or 10 times higher than pink frames so you know to be very accurate in your uh, in your inventory level uh and every aspect of the business of course in the marketing the only marketing is the most important understanding the customer behavior understanding the the, the funnel itself measure everything uh optimize your conversion based on your data but every day we surprise ourselves with the uh, with new things that we learn from our customers and we change it every day. We change the site. You know, the site itself. When we we are hosting about a hundred thousand unique visitors every day, the first step in the funnel, we divide into fourteen different personas. So we there are the people that are looking for the latest trend, and there are the people that are looking for the best, uh, the most popular, or the cost effective, or whatever the yeah. needs are. We need to adjust the site and change the funnel according to the audience that we serve and this is all based on real-time data analysis okay that's that sounds perfect and so we're yeah. kind of running up against our uh our, against our time limit here and so i've got one last kind of personal question for you and something i ask everybody if you had to travel back in time to the very beginning of, beginning of your career and you could give yourself a piece of advice what would it be Oh, uh, retroactively, you know, it's always easier to be smarter. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. I think I think it took me a while, a couple of years, to understand that we need to control the the full the whole chain. So, for in the beginning, for example, we bought the glasses from vendors and just offered them to our customers. Eventually, we understand we want also to control the quality of the product and uh control the whole chain so it's not only you know when we started the business we were an online marketing company a lot of technology involvement but we we, we thought we saw ourselves as a platform to offer some specific product to the end user uh and we could have sell shoes instead of glasses it took us a while to understand that you can you need to control it you need to design the frames you need to produce them if you want to maintain a very high quality you need to to produce the optical lens itself you need to hire opticians uh you need to control everything you need to control the return process the the pre-sale the post-sale service so i think i would start it earlier by putting everything and doing everything in house makes sense makes sense the more you the more you can control the better better quality is kind of thing so Yes, uh, like you asked me before about the logistics. Uh, in the first um, few years, I used the third parties for doing the logistics for us. Now we control everything. We will decide when we will ship it, how fast it, we will get it, uh, working 24 hours a day, I'm not working 24 hours a day. When you do it in, in house, you can do whatever you want. And that makes the, the, the whole experience much better to be a user. Nothing wrong with a little freedom. So, awesome. Well, Eldad, I cannot thank you enough for being here on the Retail Corner. And uh, uh, we'll catch up with you in a few months to kind of see how uh, how, how your uh, your Christmas season went. Sound good? Awesome. Awesome. Sounds great. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Everyone, good one. If you would like to be featured on our podcast, please email us at podcast at retailcorner.live or visit our website, retailcorner.live. Looking forward to having you as our guest on our podcast. And thank you so much for listening.